this has been the Ray Bates of the Urban TV at the Mid-Atlantic Nostalgia Con. Remember my three sons? What a great classic TV show. Well, I just got to talk to one of those three sons, Mr. Stanley Livingston. All right, here at the Mid-Atlantic Nostalgia Con talking to Stanley Livingston. Hi there, how you doing? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Has it been a good show for you so far? Yeah, it's been a great show. You know, we always enjoy getting out, meeting people, and meeting our fans, and kind of uh, getting nostalgic as they look at all these old pictures of us when we look good. Yeah, do you find that fans walk up to your table and they quote like lines from an episode of My Three Sons that you have no recollection of? Uh, uh, or that happens quite often. That happens quite often. So they I don't remember, even remember being in the show anymore. <laughs> we did 380 of them, and they've just blended into one big one by now. And how old were you when you started the show? I did the pilot when I was nine, and wow. the show ran for 12 years, so I was almost 23 by the time it went off the air so you, in first run. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Immediately went into syndication for 15 years, and, uh, Nick at Night for 10 years, TV Land for 10 years, and wow. it's kind of made the rounds on different channels. So, so you truly uh, grew up on the show. It truly been grew an up, interesting yeah. experience. Yep, every pimple. <laughs> Everyone every there. Every pimple, every wrinkle. <laughs> <laughs> and what would you say a day in your life on the set looked like? Like, what kind of hours were you working? How many days a well, week? Well, when I was a child actor, yeah, you, you were. We were there about 10 hours, out of which three of those hours had to be get schooling, uh, an hour for lunch, and somewhere in there, I think I read we were supposed to have a half hour play. Uh, I don't ever remember that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. Sometimes you'd get to do the three hours of schooling, all in one shot. Other times, every 15 minutes, they'd pull you out and do a scene, and then go back to school for 15 more minutes, and they'd pull you out and do another scene. So. Every day was different. And I know you had your brother there for part of those years. Were there some behind the scenes antics that um, we don't know? Oh, we were know always about? pulling pranks on people. <laughs> I think one time we found a ball of string, and uh, Don Grady, the guy that played Robbie, he had a flight of stairs that kind of went up one way, hit a platform turn, and then went up another way. And we took this ball of string and completely wound it around these stairs. So when they would call him to the set, he was going to have to figure out how he was going to get through all that string and <laughs> snapping and stinging him. <laughs> cool. Or another time, I think we gathered, I don't know, two million coffee cups. And our dressing room was next to his on the second floor, but they didn't have a ceiling on him. So we just started throwing them over, and I heard, ha ha, right? And we just kept going, and it was like millions and millions of cups coming over. <laughs> so you had some fun oh, in yeah. between takes. <laughs> just brotherly fun. Yeah. Now, what episodes stand out for you? Like, I'm sure you get asked all the time, what was your favorite episode? So I guess I'll ask well, that. Well, for the well. older ones, I actually like the TV pilot, uh, where a friend and I did a double date. He was dating an older woman, but not an old woman, but you know, an age-appropriate woman for him. And I had some nine-year-old girl interested in me. I didn't Aww. like and the older woman obviously was making the move on Fred because he was a widow and I guess she wanted to be our mother or something. I guess he wasn't into it, but he was trying to tell me how it was impolite not to you know, not go out on the date and be nice. But meanwhile, he wasn't following his own advice and I held him his feet to the fire about it. So we went out on a double date and it turned out to be not too good, so we both both ditched the women we were with. Uh -huh. the party. Yeah. A couple of cats. Now I see, um, looks like a rough draft of a book here, My Three Sons Companion. Tell me about that. Are you uh, helping yeah, with that some, book? He's an Australian guy, a guy named Jeff Brown, who wrote okay. this book about My Three Sons and all the various episodes, but it's My Three Sons on the molecular level. I mean, that guy knows everything about our show. I mean, everything and anything. He knows Hi, more about us than we know about us. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> just <laughs>
that's my sister. Yeah. <laughs> That was a nice little <laughs> interlude. So what projects do you have going on these days? Well, I have a production company in L.A. Right now we're working on raising funding for two different films, one called The Quarrymen, okay. which is about the earliest days of the Beatles, before they were the Beatles. Um, they were in a group called The Quarrymen, which really kind of got the ball rolling for them. And it was kind of a, a typical garage band. You know, it was comprised of neighborhood kids. Long before it was John, Paul, George, and Ringo, there yeah. was John. Then Paul finally joined, but other guys uh, that were, you know, faded away, but needed to fade away for the band to have them. So, anyway, that's another one. And another one I have is called Race with the Dragon, which is about this. Uh, it's actually based on a true story that happened in China about from about 1932 to about 1941, which there was a spectacular fossil find known as Peking Man that the uh, Americans and Chinese, it was kind of a joint archaeological dig, that uh, they were trying to get these fossils out of Japan, I mean out of China, before World War II started. And so it's kind of a, a real-life Indiana Jones story, where they were racing against time, the clock, trying to meet a ship to get all this out before World War II broke out. And uh, unfortunately it all happened on December 6th, which was the day before Pearl Harbor. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. High adventure story. Okay, neat. Meant to be shot in China. <laughs> All right, we will look for those. Do you have a website? I do. Uh, you can find me, stanleylivingston.com. No dots, no spaces, just Stanley Livingston. Makes perfect sense. We'll check it out. Thank you so much for Thank taking you so the much. time. Okay.